Hello guys, today let's talk about feature tests and unit tests in Laravel and what is the difference and I will show you one example of unit test and how it is beneficial on top of feature tests. While working on my course about Laravel testing for beginners, I've been hearing this question a lot of times. So what is the difference between unit tests, feature tests, behavioral tests, integration tests and there are a lot of other buzzwords. And it's all pretty confusing because those terms come from different authors of different languages and different backgrounds with different tools for testing. So that's why I liked that Laravel simplified it to just feature and unit. So in most cases, as a simplified version, you don't need to know any other buzzwords or types of tests. You just work with feature and unit. And feature is a very good word because it tests, well, the features. So you load the API, you load the page, you load exactly the feature that would be loaded from your browser as a user. You try to recreate the behavior. Sometimes it is called the behavioral test as well. So the example of the feature test in this table, for example, you have a table of videos, you load that URL of videos and you test that the page is loaded successfully and you see some data that you expect to see. Like for example, I have a video test that table contains a video. So I create a video and a user this is actually a feature. I test the feature that I'm getting the URL of videos and I test that the page is successful with showing the text that I expect. So this is a typical feature test and even Laravel documentation about testing mentions in bold this sentence. So feature tests should be the majority of your tests or maybe even the only types of tests you write because then you're making sure that your features work. So then what about the unit tests? What are the unit tests and how they may be beneficial in addition to feature tests? In general, the word unit and unit testing as a term, if we go outside of Laravel ecosystem, it is sometimes used in a broader sense for all automated testing. So don't get confused by that. Unit testing may be referred as general any automated testing, or in this case, in our application, unit test is about types of tests within the Laravel application. And let's take a look at the example within the same page. So I've shown you how to test that the whole page is loading, but maybe some element of that page has a specific logic, calculated logic, or logic implemented in some kind of function or even service class. And you need to make sure that that calculation or that data is implemented correctly with various cases. In this example, for example, video has a duration and these numbers are not coincidental. This is the number from the database, duration of the video in seconds, and this is what is shown visually to the user on the page or should be shown. In this case, I've shown both for demonstration purposes. And this duration is calculated as an attribute on video model. So here's a function, an attribute on video model. Attribute can be described with another syntax from Laravel 8. And also this function may be optimized maybe, but that's not the point. The point is that you have an attribute calculated from this duration, returning the string. And then in the blade, you use that as duration formatted. So if you want to test the underlying logic of that function, this becomes a unit test. So unit is a separate part of your application, most often invisible part, some kind of function, some kind of service, some kind of calculation, invisible as a feature. So you cannot really load a feature of get the formatted duration of a video visually. And also what is important about unit tests, they usually typically don't interact with the database or with HTTP requests or with API requests they interact only with the internal code of the application. I would even call them visible tests and invisible tests. So unit tests are for invisible features. So let's generate a test for that. PHP Artisan make test video duration test dash dash unit. It generates tests unit video duration test with example test of just assert true. But what we need to assert here is test video duration formatted successfully, something like this. And what do we do here? We need to create a model, model object of a video. We won't create that in the database. We will just make it in the code and then assert that the formatted duration is correct. So we create a new object, video equals new video as a model. Then you assign video 
duration equals 61 seconds, for example. Or actually, let's make it here as a fillable field. So new video with title whatever and duration 61 seconds. And then we assert that the video formatted duration, duration formatted assert equals to what we expect it to be equals to expected value of one minute and zero one second. And let's remove the comments because they are irrelevant. It's not a basic unit test. And let's launch that test by I will copy here PHP artisan test filter equals video duration test and the test is passed as a proof that it may fail. For example, maybe you expect something like this to happen. And if we relaunch the test again, it should fail because the values are not equal. Side note, you may create this in another way. You may use factories maybe, but the main point of unit tests that you don't touch the database. So you don't need to use database migrations or refresh database trait or anything like that. You just work with the object itself with the eloquent. And the point of testing all that function of formatted duration or duration formatted is to test different cases. So I often say that testing is not about writing tests, but about writing the scenarios like a movie script writer. What are different cases? What are different scenarios for using the same function? So for example, instead of just formatted successfully, we should run different cases formatted only seconds, for example. So we should make a duration of five and expectation would be zero 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 five then another test would be if we copy and paste test video duration formatted one minute with zero seconds for example so another case would be 60 and then you assert that zero zero comes into place like this and only then the third case would be both minutes and seconds for example formatted minutes with seconds, something like this. So then you go into duration of 61 and provide something like this, or maybe you can go to more than that. So duration would be 60 seconds times 12 minutes plus 34 seconds. And that is actually more readable than I would just put the calculated number here. And the expected result is 12 minutes and 34 seconds. And now if we relaunch our test with three methods in it, I actually have one failed. This is important. Oh, of course, it should not be 0005, but instead it should be just 005. Relaunch again, and now it's all passed. And I want to finish this video with the illustration, great illustration posted by Chris Arthur on Twitter. So these unit tests that we've just built, those are, for example, for Titanic, test of different units that this works well, that this part works well as a separate unit, that this lamp, for example, shines well, that this wheel or whatever is spinning well as a separate unit. But generally, as a whole feature, the Titanic didn't work, right? So your first test should be test if Titanic can swim for longer than, for example, something hours. Then you test all the features visible for people attending that ship, like does it fit all the people? Does it have a bar? Does it swim, stop, turn around or something? So the basic feature of the ship and then the mechanical parts, the invisible parts can be considered as a unit test, additionally to the feature tests. Ironically, sometimes unit tests are automatically covered by the feature tests. So if you tested that the feature works, then most likely the units are covered. So units do not throw errors and the feature works. But in some cases, as in our case, you want to test the specific unit, which is not covered by the feature containing that unit. And if you want to know more about testing in Laravel, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is shaking. I probably should get some tea or something after shooting a few videos at once. So anyway, I have a full course for beginners of testing in Laravel and currently working on the second part, which is advanced testing in Laravel. So follow me on Twitter at Povilos Corp to follow all the news of when that course is launched and purchase the yearly membership to get all of my courses, including the upcoming ones for a year. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.